automobile wiring in uh, I'll say most it's probably all but if I say all somebody will point out a vehicle that is and so I'm just gonna say most vehicles are what we call 12 volt negative ground systems basically your house is probably 120 volt alternating current this is direct current 12 volts you're gonna have a plus or a hot and a negative or ground wire on this 12 volt battery you're also gonna have an alternator that's gonna create approximately 13.6 volts something you'll learn when you're working with electricity even though it's 12 volts it's actually somewhere between 11 and 14 typically uh, as far as working range so basically with your hot or your positive you don't ever want to touch that to the ground or you will have at least a spark if not worse uh, the way they wire vehicles typically is the hot side of the battery will be wired into one or more fuse blocks and then power will go off of there and that way if something pops touches ground or pulls more power than expected it will pop the fuse instead of blowing up your battery this particular police car obviously they've added some aftermarket wiring here cut wires when they right before they sold the car to me God only knows what was wired to here I generally don't like to wire like that I like to go off of the fuse block or a different ground source other than just on the battery itself this is not necessarily wrong it's just kind of sloppy and looks bad when you're looking at it Typically, you'll see red for your hot and black for your ground. However, once you start digging into the, all the different accessories, you'll notice an infinite number of wire colors, colors with stripes, solid colors, etc. There's not really any kind of standard that I've noticed with vehicles. The best thing to do is get a wiring diagram for your vehicle and use your multimeter test and make sure with your vehicle you're, you're typically going to have your hot all the time which is your, your battery powered stuff things like headlights typically have power all the time and then you'll have what we call key on power which basically is only hot when the key is either an accessory or run position some cars you know, I should say some probably all cars have uh, certain things that are hot also in the start position such as the starter motor um, but that's your basic power obviously there are relays switches that will turn things on and off but your starting point is hot all the time or hot only when the key is in a certain position and that's typically the 90 something percent of the wiring you're going to work with will either be hot or keyed on power. Uh, you're probably not going to be adding things that need power when you're cranking the motor and things like that. Alright, we're going to talk about car wiring today. Most if not all automotive wiring is what we call stranded wiring and your home usually has a solid wire so a solid wire would be a solid piece of copper inside there and a car is little thin strands of copper that group together make the different sizes the smaller the number the thicker the wire so there's a 12 gauge which is very thick the red one here is an 18 gauge and then I have two 20 gauge wires there a red and a black you want to use as thick as you can it's a lot more expensive but it's going to handle amperages better uh, and, and just generally a better quality of wire you can get away with powering really small items that don't draw a lot of power with the smaller wires but things like an automotive amp you're going to want to go with a thicker wire 
some of the other things that you're going to need if you're really getting into the car wiring, uh, like I did, started out just trying to learn how to put a stereo in, and before long I'm doing all kinds of stuff. Uh, fuses, I've just got a couple examples here, but there's an infinite number of fuses nowadays. Uh, basically, those will pop if uh, something goes wrong, so instead of blowing up your battery or causing major problems with the car, the fuse will pop. You can replace the fuse once you figure out why it's popping. Got some heat shrink tubing there, which is great for sealing up and keeping uh, the wires from touching metal. This item here is a flasher. That's how your turn signals flash. Basically, it makes the signal come in and then it sends it out in a pulse rather than steady. I've got just a simple switch here. This three prong one is because it has a light on it. And so you have a hot coming in, a ground coming in, and then the output. And so with the hot and ground there, when it's turned on, the light will come on. This is a relay, and this is something that you will definitely want to learn how to use if you're doing any kind of car stuff. Uh, I can go into a lot more detail later on, but basically this is a method for which you can either send two different power sources to one item, or two items can switch between one power source, depending on how this is wired. And So it's really useful if you're wanting things like lights to come on with your high beams or lights to come on only with your low beams, things of that nature. Uh, this probably worth buying if you can. This attaches to the relay and it's got your color-coded wires which makes it a lot simpler for you. You notice I've got a uh, relatively inexpensive crimping set here. Just kind of gives you every size and type of uh, connector that you might need. Obviously you can buy much more expensive ones. Uh, me personally, I like to solder. I don't like to crimp unless I just absolutely have to or you know, if I'm putting one of these connector ends on. Uh, you know, Obviously sometimes you, you can't solder those very easily. You're going to need a wire crimper this also doubles as a wire stripper and a wire cutter. The wire cutter on it doesn't last very long, so you're really going to need to buy a heavier duty cutter. And if you're doing a lot of wire stripping and a lot of wire crimping, you may want to even get a better, uh, more high quality tool. But a tool like this one here will certainly get you started in the wiring. Got a high quality wire solder here. Uh, and then as I was saying earlier about the color of the wire, I also have red tape, yellow tape, and black tape. And that's generally how I mark my wiring. So red being hot all the time, black being ground or negative, and your yellow being your keyed on power. And so that way I know when I open up a project months or years later and I forget what wires what. I don't have to pull out the electrical tester and, and test it. I, I can look at my tape and it will tell me. Speaking of testers, you probably want a multimeter, something similar to this. You can get an analog one. Um, both the analog and the digital have different uses. Uh, what I like an analog for is if you're trying to test changing voltages, it, it, since it has a an arm that basically sweeps across it, it gives you a better idea of what the voltage is changing whereas the digital one like this is just going to be popping up numbers and it's hard to really tell sometimes what the voltage is doing but otherwise the digital one's great for if you're just wanting to test voltage see if a wire is hot or if the wire is only hot with the key on or which wires are ground it's really useful to figure that stuff out and we can talk about that more later if you're adding stuff, you definitely want to, like I said, add fusing. You don't ever want to just go directly to a battery. Uh, so you're going to want some 
fuse holders like this. You can attach these type of fuses directly to these type of connectors, um, but you're going to want to at least tape them off, if not put some heat shrink on them, uh, which is why I like something like this where it's all sealed in there. This is a different variety of switch in there. This is one that doesn't have a light on it, so it's just basically got an in and an out. There's no place for a ground wire. Uh, so this could actually have the ground coming in or it could have the hot coming in, depending on what your application is needing. Uh, sometimes you actually want to be able to switch the ground on and off to trigger certain things, and most of the time you probably want the, the hot coming in so that you're switching on the hot or switching off the hot. So that is basically the car wiring starter kit right there. If you have all those things, you can do quite a bit. I'll get into some of the more specific stuff a little later.